Yo, Brett Parker here, Handicap Scratch. One way now for another lesson with Dan. Tonight we're gonna to do something slightly different. So we're gonna do the wedge test on Trackman. And then we're also gonna look through my wedges. So um, have a look at what I've got, whether they're right for me, whether they're suited. I know Dan had briefly mentioned in a previous lesson that then they were good when I first got them, but they're now not suited to my the game at the minute and where I want to go so uh, we're gonna have a look at that we'll get some discussions with Dan I'll try and film as much as I can with Dan if Dan will let me um, and maybe some new wedges to come so yeah we'll see uh, it'll be quite interesting I'm in a little bit of a rush at the minute Dan's rung me he wants me to come an hour earlier obviously times have shifted around so um, yeah come along hopefully it should be good fun I've just stuffed a load of food down my face so um, yeah let's see uh, how we get on I'm interested to see what Dan's got to say wedges is something I've not had much dealings with especially things like grinds and lofts and stuff like that i've literally just bought 52 56 60 that'll do let's go with that that's what everyone else has got um but never really understood why i had them or for what reasons so. yeah it'd be a good video here just in time never seems to rain in highly it's always sunny not sure why don't think that's quite the case but it always is quite a nice evening so uh, yeah as I mentioned uh, wedge game so fingers crossed Dan will give me some miraculous insights hopefully it's not gonna cost me too much in terms of uh, the new wedges I'm gonna get the great thing with coming to see someone like Dan who doesn't have a shop is he's not obliged to tell you one brand or another he, like if he tells me you should buy this wedge in this make in this whatever you know whatever it comes out he can't then sell me the wedge because he doesn't have them unless he's going to buy them and then resell them to me which he obviously he's not going to do so it's great coming to someone that doesn't have a shop to rely on that doesn't need you to buy that product in order to make their living if you like dan is a coach and he understands that and he understands the game and he still understands the products that you need so it's good to get his insights because it's not from a biased point so yeah I'm quite looking forward to it it's gonna cost me a bit though if he uh, says some tight lists whatever golf is golf Like on the course, I would work 60, 80, or 100 for 60, 56, and 52. Okay, so going off how far I see you here, yeah. I'm experiencing that world burn in 60. Yeah. Now, if I measured with my bush line, I'd have 60 yards, I would be going at it full with this. Like it would be a full swing as if I was hitting any other iron in my bag. But that's definitely not what I should be doing. What, what I think you're doing on the course is getting underneath it. Okay. The ball coming out of the face. Yeah. The more loft. Because the more loft I have in the face. Yeah. 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 So it comes up deader as well. Not jumping them up. Yeah. Yeah. Going off that right now, there's so much scope in there. Yeah, definitely. Like the first three, I didn't even score. So, 
Yeah. What have we just seen? <laughs> so really? Obviously, I'm flushing all the irons in here. My 60 degree normally would go 60 degrees. So what do we do? 60 degrees goes 60 degrees. That's really impressive, yeah. though. <laughs> 60 full out goes only goes 60 degrees. It means 60 yards. Yes. Right. So what we did is we took this wedge outside because we had a slight debate. We did the trackman test, obviously, in here off a mat, which is a good surface. And Brett's telling me, don't hit it. That's fine. This is how distance as it goes. Now, this wedge, can we see where he's just flushed this from? <laughs> no. This is a bit high in the face. Fair in mind, we went outside and it's pitch black. We went 60 yards away from the pin with the light on the ball so I could hit it. I hit it, felt perfect, flushed it. First thing I hear Dad say, you fat in it! <laughs> It was madness. I you, know, you should have it. seen. You can't. You can't describe it. The size of this divot was obscene. If I'd have laid down in it, I could have been camouflaged and hidden for <laughs> forever. It'd be like the best hiding place for me at my height. You know, someone not vertically challenged like me, it'd be okay. So what we're gonna do is take you through this test that we can see. He's hitting him a lot, lot further on the test, but it's because of what we're seeing in the technique. It's really steeper in the stripe. We can see. Impact location on the face. There. Oh, it is. <laughs> Cleveland didn't even know that you might have flushed him off the top. <laughs> when they designed this I've wedge. I've that, come on. <laughs> it's a new sweet spot, how to roof a lob wedge and flush it. <laughs> really. Right, well, let's have a look at what the actual report showed from Trapman. Yeah. We should be able to improve on. And let's see what the technique was at the start. We'll go through that and then we'll start working at those changes. Let's see if we can develop your pitching game. I thought it was good. <laughs> <laughs> you won't get to scratch. I know, yeah, that's true. Let's get it to him. Score 57.8. Yeah. Now, obviously, what we could see here was first three shots, zero, zero, zero. Okay. Now, First one, you absolutely crushed it strike-wise. Yeah. Okay, because smash factor's up at 1.15. But the rest are really, really consistent in around one. Except the last one, you had a huge amount of decel in there. Smash factor was below one. What that means is, if one smash factor of 1.00 means that the club head and the ball speed are going to be identical. But if you've got a smash factor less than one, that means that to hit the ball 60 yards, you have to swing it somewhere near 62 miles an hour. Yeah. That means you've got to absolutely thrash it to get it 60 yards. Yeah. In a minute, we'll actually get you to a full lob wedge in here yeah. and see what mile an hour you are. That'll give us an idea of what smash factor you might be getting on the golf course. Yeah. So that last one was 60 yards, we paced it, yeah. and you had it 54-ish. Yeah. So it's quite a long way short. Of what we're expecting, yeah. obviously due to this little bad boy. Straight down its throat, my ad. <laughs> it's not a scratch golf though, is it? <laughs> it was down its throat. The, the outcome was amazing. <laughs> this worried me. Yeah. No, I'm thinking, good. on a nice, tight, linksy lie, you're going to struggle. Yeah. It's, I, good. it's good though, like you say, it's... Um... For me, I, it's not a massive issue for me in the sense that I didn't know I was doing anything wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I just love the actual oblivious nature of it from me. You've gone, I thought I was doing everything all right. Yeah, everything's fine. <laughs> so, right, technique. Let's yes. have a look at this. Right. What am I doing wrong? So hips are too far away from the target. We need to push those forwards a little bit in this direction here. Yep. Now, that'll just kind of get you a little bit more over your left which is where I want it to be. What we'll then see is get a little bit of shift across and now what we're doing is upper body's massively leaning forwards. So now we can see how much everything is starting to lean forwards and go forwards in this direction. So lean, lean, lean. So this is so steep coming in, okay? But on a mat or a tight line, I mean, this mat gives. It doesn't give as much as turf, obviously. But... It's going to give you a different contact. Because this yeah. is one of the mats that you can put a tee into. So it actually represents turf when you hit a fat shot. Yeah. But because you aren't, kind of weren't catching them as heavy as you might do off the yeah. grass, it's not going to be as compromised on the strike. I can't go six feet under is what you're saying. No. <laughs> okay. So what we'd see is, as you start to go forwards here, it makes you 
have to back out a little on here on this shot so you kind of the actual path looks really good there to be fair you know you're shallow in shallow pretty shallow coming in there i see it as you're almost backing out of it so you get steep and then sometimes you back out of it yeah okay see so it's so steep here that then your head you see your head's actually going to the right yeah so your head is now going to the right hand side yeah, yeah so that's relaxed. why we could see it a little bit that's why it looked really good through impact on the left hand side See how it's shallow and from the in to out there? Yeah. But that's because the head's backing out because actually you're really, really steep yeah. in the early part of the downswing. You know? So what we're going to do, we're going to uh, get the setup better, get you pivoting a bit more around that left side, get you a bit more neutral and get you nipping them out the bottom of the face a little bit more. Okay. First thing though, I want to see what the actual smash factor is on a full 60 from you. Okay. So full shot 60. Okay, so we'll have a look at this full shot. 60 degree, club speed 78.7. Okay, which is in here giving you a smash factor of 0.98. Okay, yeah. so still less than one. And spinning it at 11,550. So plenty of spin. Back loads and loads and loads of spin, mate. Yeah. But if that's if that's 0 0.98, let's quickly do a calculation and see what that gets us at a full shot. Okay, Dan. You've uh, wrote a load of stuff. Okay, so what we've Don't got is... It. <laughs> this is obviously going off your track man just a second ago yep. 78.7 was what felt like your full club head speed yeah like a standard iron shot. okay so this is your carry that you were telling me 60 yards yep. so the calculation of 60 yards gives us a smash factor of 0.77 then we go off what we did outside on the one that you felt was a good strike which is 55.70. So this is this is massively glaring at us, okay? You want it to kind of be somewhere where we had it in here outside. Yeah. Like somewhere between 1.05 and 1.09. I'd actually like you to be more like 1.12 yeah. to 1.15, but I think it'd be a little while before we get it up there. And what would a scratch goal for sit? Most of all of the guys that I'm teaching are somewhere in between kind of 1.12 to 1.18. Okay. But let's quickly, whilst we're doing it, I actually did a test with Mike Bedford today. Okay, so he scored 87.6. That was just a, like one before he goes off to comp. 1.13. So 1.14 was the max down at 1.03. Okay. He's averaging 1.1. So they had a couple of things where he's probably decelled yeah. on it, something like that, okay? Let's get the best score up, which is Reese, to give us an idea. So that's 92.8. Yeah. That's like plus five. And we can see there, the pre they're all yeah. above one, yeah? yeah? Okay, that one's a bad, a couple of bad ones in there, a bit high. But we look at where you were in here, yeah, this is good. I flushed okay. one, but then like, yeah. Okay, but look where this is on the course. Because the you're, you're saying to me about those <clears throat> course yardages, and I'm like, okay, well, let's go and find out. So yeah. It wasn't until we went outside, and because it took a divot, it's a little bit softer, the ground at the moment, it clearly showed where that impact location is. So... Everyone, if you're unsure first off in your wedges, you need to know where your strike point is. So a bit of spray on the face to start getting that. If you can't see it from a divot, it's going to help you a lot. Okay. If you find that your wedges are miles shorter than your other clubs, probably going to be linked to this. Yeah. Okay. The, now, it, the interesting thing is, I'm kind of inputting the fact that I'm not going to strike it well. In my head, I'm striking it well, but I'm actually working my yardages out by the fact that I can't hit it right. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, but how far did your 7-9 go? 156, somewhere. Okay, so 
Your There's a big 52 gap. degree wedge should be going 150. Yeah. Because you've got eight irons, 145, 135, yeah. 125, 115. Yeah. Probably 105, 95. So in here, your flat out lob wedge was going about 95. Yeah. Somewhere near where it should be yeah. doing. Whereas on the golf course, it's going 60 yards. Yeah. So, right, what we've got to do then, obviously, change impact location, because that's yep. the number one thing that's killing you. But we're going to have to change massively the amount of lean we've got. Okay. Get rid of that, which will then get rid of that back out through the ball, because you're then adding loft through impact when your head's going backwards. Okay. What we need to do, take it, through, take it into a dress position. <clears throat> Push those hips towards the target a little bit that way. Okay, now, I want you to feel like your weight stays a little bit more on that front leg for me, and take it to the top of your back swing. Or half back. Okay, now from here, turn those hips a little bit more for me. Okay, okay. now from there, now start to feel that, that lower body starts to shift, shift forward just a little bit. Okay, keep that up and up. Okay, keep everything rotating through. Let your head come through forwards a little bit more. There you go. Your arms more over your left side, you are. I'm a lot wider. Yeah, I'm not standing on. Feels like you're <laughs> massively that way to you. I used to do that here. Yeah, because you're used to doing this, you're used to going. There, there, yeah. what we need to get is here, yeah. get some length from that left side to take it back again. Okay, so what we need to do is take it back and then push that pelvis up towards me over here. Feel like you push it to this left corner. Okay, okay, do it again. So keep your head back and turn to me here. See where I am? Yeah. Right, turn your body, keeping your head more stable, turn the middle of your body towards me. Nearly, a bit more. Out here with the arms, that's it. Okay. The arms will feel like you're going to be in a draw, but without flipping your hands over, okay. and then your body's going to move up towards me. Okay. Your head staying more stable. Way better. To my hands like in front of them. Yeah. yeah. But to you what you've been doing is because you've de-lofted it, yeah, yeah, on the way down, your body knows where it is. So go where the club is. So you your head's going backwards to recover it, and then your arms are getting really narrow through here. Yeah. Okay. So you've got no constant to your radius. Yeah. So your circle's always changing. Yeah. Yeah. And it's always getting on the narrow side, which was the opposite we saw on the test what you'd see on the course every time you say it comes up short. Yeah. So that's changing the impact location. I'm going to guess you take a lot of divot. <laughs> Probably, yeah. yeah. Going, off the tre going off a trench result. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to be getting like this. Yeah. Whereas what we need is this, and you'll feel more up and forwards from the middle bit here for me. Okay. Right. And you'll feel like your left arm and your tricep stays tighter, like you're almost pulling it against your rib cage. Not that way, because that's open. Yeah. That way is square. Okay. Okay? Because have a look, what, what, that's going to be short, isn't it? Yeah. Look where that wrist is. Yeah. It's going to be great for a bunker shot, no good for this. <laughs> so what, a good, a good feeling for you is now, pull it through with your stomach and your left shoulder from here. Feel a tightness there. Now tighten that in a bit more. The other way. That way. Uh, okay, so my left arm's putting off. That's how it'll feel. Okay. Yeah. yeah? If you go this way, where's the club face? Yeah, wide open. <laughs> now it's neutral, but that'll look close to you. Yeah. Yeah? If I bring that back down to the beginning, watch this. Tighten that tricep now from here and bring it through, bring it through. Where well, the club is, it's still at 90 to that same circle, isn't it? Yeah? It's just come through square. Yeah. And then you can keep it here a lot easier. That makes sense? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Do it again. So imagine it's going like, go, go more like this, mate. Go. From here, keep it on the floor, okay, and drag the pump through. Behind your foot on the floor, drag it. Okay, <laughs> that's open. Yeah, left it open. Closer. Let it feel like this bit here is trying to turn in. See how I'm, see how I'm like turning it? Yeah. Okay, so. Turn it in a bit more. There you go. 
So don't let, don't be afraid to let this feel like it's turned down for you. Okay. Because you have it cupped on. Two cups and yeah. feel like it's almost semi bowing. Okay. Miles different, babe. Miles different. Yeah. It looks it's class. Good. It might look, in your own mind, looking at it, probably feel like you look quite Zach Johnson in. Yeah. Yeah. So if you kind of get this upper arm, like I get a bit tighter against that. Night tick on the jumper there. See how endorsement just came in there. Yeah. <laughs> they're gonna be loving me, aren't they? They're not selling it anymore. <laughs> right foot. Yeah. Just saying. Your right foot. Don't let it go that way at the end. Okay. Because that's gonna mean that you've over rotated your pelvis. Okay. okay that's the first. So what you want to do is so that your pelvis is rotated properly, that foot should never go beyond. 90 at the end of the follow through. Yeah. In a half pitch, it should be in, almost in like a half roll there. Okay. Miles better. Now your footwork and your lower body's working with you, you get the club face in a better position. Yeah, it did feel a lot easier though. Okay, doing all that. Right, let's see what that looks like just as a move back and through without a ball a second. Okay, do one for me without a ball. Not dragging it back and through. I want it, I want it uh, waist high, back, waist high through, push it to the target, weight over your left side. Hip, push forward, push forward. That's your whole body, hips. Hips. There you go. That Ooh. feels weird. Right, okay, let's press. That's way better. Look at that on the screen. Let's grab the camera. Such a weird feeling. <laughs> okay, right, yeah. let's try a uh, half swing back and through like that. With a ball? Yep. Let's get a look. Dangerous. It is. So the same shot but with a ball. Expect from my first shot, but that's that would be nicked <laughs> on the course. That's good. Even even your thin one <laughs> seven point seven down. <laughs> that's like a joke. <laughs> and it's got sixty yards. <laughs> my thin goes sixty yards. Okay. With a smash of one point one five. Yeah. You positively drilled it. That's way better, mate. Look. It's not got the same lean look, has it? No. Have you got the other one? Yeah. yeah. That's not lean as in shredded the shit at the gym, Lee. Um, <laughs> That's to come. <laughs> supposedly. Um, so look at how it leaned so much with the upper body. Kind of recovered it. That was one from the test. Yeah. Okay. Um, this was another one from the test. Okay, that one was on your test. That one was meant to. That one went 63 yards on the. It was meant to have gone 63 yards on the test. That one in the other one, you hit 79 on the left. Okay. This one here, you hit 68. I know you hit it thin. It's a completely different movement. Yeah. Way more width in it. Okay, we just need to quieten down those legs, get them a little bit. We get our right leg and right knee. So I was over rotating at the end there. Yeah, my foot. Yeah. Need to get rid of that and quieten down that those legs and that bottom of the pelvis and just get it coming more from the trunk. Okay. Okay, that's possibly the most insightful like lesson I've ever had. That was incredible. The difference was just amazing. I don't even know where to start. I, I walked in, wedge test, that was the plan, and then talk about wedges and what to buy and things like that. Putting us on the Trackman test, Started hitting my 60 degree wedge, 100 yards, 90 something yards, I think it was. My 60 degree doesn't go that far. And I was that confident, I accused dad that his track man was wrong. That I don't hit it that far. So the ultimate test, let's walk outside in the pitch black. Pace out 60 yards from a flag with Dan's phone as a light. Hovered it over the wedge. 
set up to the ball. I know roughly where I'm aiming, hit it, felt like I flushed it. Absolutely perfect. First thing Dan says, you've caught it fat! Did I? Didn't feel fat, felt like I flushed it. So we walk up, it's about five yards short of the pin, dead down the throat, absolute perfect. In my mind, absolutely flushed it. In Dan's mind, the worst shot you could ever imagine. Absolutely horrible, I've fatted it. I've, it's gone straight, but it was awful. It's like I've trained myself to hit bad shots and I know how far my bad shots go. Now that's okay for where I am, and a five handicapper, a ten handicapper, and if I want to stay there, that's absolutely fine. If I want to get the scratch, that's not good enough. I have to be flushing, properly flushing my wedges. So um, we went through a little bit, as you can see in the video, and already I'm starting to see changes, big, big changes, less lean. It's completely different. It's weird. I think it's good. It's really, really good. It's good to see that Something that in my head was fine and didn't need touching yet, I knew it needed work, but didn't. it wasn't the, one of the urgent things, is possibly one of the most urgent things in my game. My irons are good, my drive is good, my putting obviously needs work and my chipping needs work. But for my wedges, think about this, from 50 to 100 yards, that's what this, the Trackman test was. I was hit, counting on my 60 degree go and 60 yards, it was going 100 could you imagine on the course if I flushed one where I'm 60 yards away? That's insane. How did I get to five? This is the weird thing. Like, how have I got this low off playing like this? It's, that's the, probably possibly the best lesson I've had in terms of insightfulness and in terms of like revelation. It's just completely opened my eyes and something I, I have to work on now. I have to get better. I have to be getting better inside 100 yards. So, yeah. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I sure did. What a difference that's made. If you like the video, leave it a like. If you dislike it, leave it a thumbs down. Comment down below. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, it's completely free to do so. I've got loads more content to do. Um, I've got Portugal coming up on the 17th. 17th, I'm going to Portugal, down near Faro. Um, I'm playing five days of golf. I'm going to try and film as much as I can. I'm going to try and get a bit more content while I'm over there as well. Um, yeah, leave a comment down below. What would you like to see while I'm in Portugal? Uh, I'm going to try and get some grass driving ranges while I'm there, work on my wedges. I think that'd be quite good. Play as many courses as I possibly can. Um, yeah, it's. I'm just blown away by tonight's lesson. <laughs> so bizarre. Yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Next week, that's when we're going to do the wedges. I need to speak to Dan in terms of what wedges or if the wedges that I've got are wrong. Uh, next week, I'm going to do that video with Dan. It will be coming up, not this weekend, the weekend after. See you then. No right, one knows you play golf. <laughs> Watch out for a car, <laughs>